Hey guys, sorry I am late. Was having some technical difficulties. I had to put my um, IT hat on for a minute and it still didn't work. I was having some trouble with my webcam for some reason. Um, but here I am. How's everybody doing tonight? Hold on one second, let me get this up here. It's not ideal because now I have to run this from the phone, which is not how I wanted to do this, but um, we're gonna just have to let it do what it do. One second, bear with me. Channel. Okay. Good night, good night. Hello, Blackheart. Give thanks, give thanks. I just want to make sure everybody can hear me, right? It's a it's a little iffy on my end. So I just want to make sure you can before I start going in. Good evening, good evening. All right, awesome. Thank you, Blackheart, for confirming. All right, we're gonna jump into it. Um, so today I was supposed to actually be preparing myself to uh, dive tomorrow for a lionfish derby but nature had other plans for us the the lionfish derby was in miami and unfortunately the water isn't co cooperating um we have ways to check the water weather just like you check the weather daily and earlier this week it kind of forecasted that there would be two to three foot waves and then well today was supposed to be worse than sunday it was going to be like three to four foot waves today and then tomorrow is two to three foot waves so they decided to postpone the tournament they're going to move it to april 1st and 2nd so i have rescheduled us to go on april 1st april fools hopefully that works out in our favor anyway um so instead of getting my gear together getting prepared for early morning tomorrow I decided let me go ahead and hop on with y'all because it's been a minute since I've been able to like put up a video. I'm working on a couple of them though. Um, so I have some stuff coming, but I just wanted to, to touch bases with you guys and talk chat with you for a little bit. The next video I'm gonna be talking about lionfish and kind of why they're invasive and why I actually target them when I dive. Um, so that should be that should be interesting for anyone who who likes um seeing that kind of stuff um as well as the tournament getting canceled a lot of just regular charters that normally go out on the weekend they canceled and then the funny thing is you know how sometimes the weather is wrong it was kind of wrong today as well because in the morning was pretty calm and so all the dive charters had already canceled as well as, well as their divers. Their divers had canceled too. So, you know, people missed out on diving today, but it did get very sporty. It had a small craft advisory and everything, but this morning was not what it looked like. And then, but in the afternoon, it got really choppy. So no diving tomorrow, unfortunately for me. Um, I've been out of the water maybe a week now. I think I went, when did I go? I went last Sunday. I went last Sunday. I dove. Um, what charter did I go with? I dove with Lady Luck. The, I'm sorry. I would. I dove the Lady Luck wreck with Dixie Divers, Lady Go Diver boat. And on that mission, I did get. I did get two lionfish on that wreck. And I also cracked the lens of my GoPro underwater housing. Um, and I got it on film. 
I didn't get to film much else because once that cracked, it kind of the pressure from from being so far under kind of messed with the functions of the camera. So I don't even have it on camera, me catching those lap, um, lionfish, but they're in the fridge. So um, I actually do have one still because I haven't I haven't I had it frozen um, just in case I wanted to do some content with it. But that's going to be dinner probably for tomorrow. Um, as far as the Lionfish Derby goes, though, like I said, it got postponed to April. Um, but I guess it'll give people a chance to sign up. So there are really great prizes on this, on this, um, for this event. It's Zookeeper and Ace Diving um, Charters that, uh, that is holding the event. And some of the prizes are like uh, most Lionfish will get you $750. Largest lionfish will get you $400. And smallest lionfish will get you $250. So not bad, right? You can sign up for one day or two days. Of course, you have to pay for each day. So that could get a little pricey. But if you're going to end up winning, it would definitely be worth it and work out in the end for you. Uh, some upcoming videos I have, like I said, I was going to do one about lionfish and kind of how they got here, where they're originally from, the kind of devastation that they're doing and why I target them and what you can help to do about it. Um, one of those things is um, donating to places like Lionfish Central, which is a nonprofit organization organization that does lionfish research. They are currently working on a submarine that will go down to depths that divers can't go to to actually get lionfish because lionfish can live anywhere from like zero feet to a thousand feet. So, you know, divers can't go that deep. So they're working on a submarine and working on a mechanism to put on the submarine that would actually be able to hit the lionfish bring them into the submarine or some kind of compartment in the submarine um, so that we could capture those at those depths. And interestingly enough, I've been given the opportunity to take a class on um, the submersible. So I'm going to be doing a class in March. It's called the Submersible Submarine Level 1 course. That's going to be um, in the middle of March. And that's gonna allow me to um, pretty much operate, I guess, help to operate that very submarine that Lionfish Central is working on. So exciting stuff coming up, all right? Um, <clears throat> they're working on going down to about 300 feet, observing, documenting, and soon as that mechanism is prepared, removing lionfish as well. Um, there's also a fundraiser. I think I linked it in the community tab. There's a, they're, they're doing a fundraiser as well. That if I get if I if my campaign gets over two thousand dollars, that I I run it I run the chance of going on a lionfish cruise. That would be pretty awesome. It's going to the ABC Islands. That's the Aruba Bonaire Curacao in September. And the dates are September 16th to the 24th. That would be the perfect uh, birthday gift for me because my birthday is on the 16th. Anyway, other things that Lionfish Central is doing, they have, um, they made a Lionfish app. So if you look up Lionfish Patrol, I believe, and he's also working on things like adding restaurants that serve Lionfish, um, adding like charters and local people who do lionfish expeditions so that you could go on that app. It'll basically be, be the all inclusive app for lionfish, anything lionfish, whether you want to go catch them, whether you want to eat them, you know, and things like that. They, he also has a podcast. Um, he's the same one that did the comic book, the Lionfish Heroes comic book, which Salty Lux is featured in as well as many other um, lionfish hunters from around the world. Um, if you donate $100 to that campaign, you get, you get the um, comic book free. The comic book is also available for purchase separately for about 20 bucks, I believe. If you go to lionfishcentral.org, 
is the um, website. I'll put it in the comments as well so that you're able to um, look that up yourself. Let's see, anything else? The Reef Florida Keys Lionfish Sweep is starts in April on the 1st as well, all the way to June 30th. And the Emerald Coast Open, which is another lionfish tournament, one of the bigger ones that's up on the panhandle. I'm hoping to maybe go to that one as well. Um, but that's in Destin, Florida. So that one is the Emerald Coast Open Derby, and that's in May, May 19th to the 21st. They just had the pre-tournament um, event or party, party the other day. So that kind of runs all this time. So there's people actively out there getting lionfish. I was told that there were so many. One of the teams, I believe, is over 100 lionfish in the two days that they were, they were um, hunting. So Destin has a little bit more of a lionfish problem than we do down here because in Pompano, like Fort Lauderdale, Pompano area, we have so many divers in the water that... Um, we don't have like a major concentration of lionfish. I know my content maybe looks, makes it look a little different, but we don't have a super, super major presence here because there's just so many people in the water taking them out, you know? Um, so I'll open the floor up to any questions. Let me see if I can see. Yeah, let me see what else we have here. So, you know, part of the reason that I hunt lionfish is because they're not native to these waters. And basically they kind of wreak havoc, they wreak havoc on the reef because they don't have any natural predators here. Um, so nothing's eating them. They multiply at a super duper rate. They, the females can bear eggs every four days. And when I say every four days, they can lay up to 30,000 eggs each time. So, I mean, do the math, that, that equals up to over 2 million per year, just from one lionfish. Obviously, all of those eggs do not survive, but that's a pretty large number, right? Um, especially if you don't have something that's taking them out, you know? It's all about the, the cycle of nature, right? So that's why the divers have now stepped in to try to help out because sharks, not that sharks can't eat them, but they don't because they don't really know what they are. They're, they're foreign to them, you know? Um, so we do have events where sharks eat them. Sometimes people feed lionfish to sharks. Um, I wouldn't recommend that because we don't want he, um, divers being associated with food for sharks. It's kind of detrimental for somebody like me who spare fish. Um, I don't want shark thinking that I'm a free, I'm an easy meal, right? Or or being around me, you get an easy meal. So I don't really recommend feeding lionfish to shark, but some people do. Um, you have the eels eat them as well. Groupers have eat, eaten them. Barracudas have eaten them. And nothing happens to these things. But like I said, they don't really know that, you know, it's a food source, I guess you could say, because it's just foreign to them. So they kind of go unchecked. Their growth goes unchecked due to that, which is one of the reasons they're such a problem, because you have this really high rate of reproduction and a low rate of them being taken out. They live for about 15 years or so. So they have a decent lifespan. Um, and like I said, they can spawn every four days once they become sexually mature, which happens within a year. One year is all it takes for them to be old enough to um, spawn eggs, right? So that could get out of control pretty quickly. Works out for me because they taste really great. So catch them and that's dinner. That's an easy dinner. So they're one of the most sustainable um, fish in the ocean. And it really works out that they taste great. They're white fleshy meat. Um, there's, there's no bloodline. So there's nothing to read. So once you, there's, you know, I usually eat my fish whole. 
not usually sometimes i do sometimes i don't sometimes i fillet it it does depends on what i'm trying to do with the fish um but with the lionfish if it's not big enough i keep it whole the only thing i do with the lionfish is i take the head off because <clears throat> unlike other fish that have like meaty cheeks and stuff like that <clears throat> sorry the lionfish doesn't have any meat in his head at all it's just really spiny so it's it's of no use to me so i just take the the, the head off and fr fry the body whole the other day i blackened some fillets it's really good blackened I'm, almost every fish is really good blackened so you know i'm kind of biased on that um but when you get a large amount of them you can chop it up you can do this it's so versatile you can do lionfish fritters you can do all kinds of fillets i like to do them uh pecan crusted lionfish um i like them blackened everything's good fried right but i try to keep away from the fried foods too much um what else do we do with them I've baked, I've baked lionfish as well. That's pretty good. Um, like I said, it's a, it's a fleshy white meat. Um, and pretty much it takes on whatever you throw at it. So whatever it is that you want to throw at it, whatever seasonings and stuff, it's it really, I just let it, most of the time I let it sit at least overnight. So it marinates in the seasonings and I mean perfect the next day once you cook it. It can be made as sushi. I am not really a sushi person, so there's that, but you know, it's an option, All right? So I'm gonna open up the floor. You guys have any questions? Go ahead and type them in the chat. I'll try to keep an eye out on them going through. All right, um, let's see. So yeah, some of the ways that we go about dealing with lionfish kind of like what we were going to do this weekend they hold derbies um zookeeper has this device that is a containment unit for lionfish so once you spare them you can easily put them in the zookeeper you don't have to worry about getting poked by this by the spines um that's the easiest way to handle them when you're spare fishing because that way you don't have to worry about the spines if I don't have a zookeeper with me, I normally use my scissors and I'll cut the spines off while I'm under there and then put them in a regular fishing bag. That way I don't have to worry about the spines because the spines have already cut, been cut, then there's no way for them to poke me. There are 18 spines on the, line, on the lionfish, 13 at the top, that's like a mohawk, um, two on the pelvic, pelvic um, area, and another what another three on the anal so once you know where all those spines are it's really not much of a danger to you so i've i've never been poked by lionfish fortunately there was one time when i got pretty close it kind of pricked me on the finger but it didn't go enough it didn't go into it didn't really pierce my finger enough to do any damage so i didn't feel anything other than like a it was like a like getting pricked by a pin really quick um but i've seen i've seen its effect on someone and it's not a pretty sight you know um it's really painful from what i can see um so i avoid that at all costs but you know there's been some close calls so it's just something you got to be careful with but just like any fish and uh, all fish have spines just the rest of the fish are not venomous that that fish is venomous um but i i probably been poked more by regular fish than i ever will by a lionfish you know um because you try to handle like like snapper um mutton snapper has pricked me a whole lot of times because they they're they're really strong once you hit them they kind of wiggle all over the place so they i get picked by them pretty often see what else we have here so upcoming videos i have a few um that i'm that i'm going to be working on i have a dive at cookie point beach i have 
a dive at Saba Island. That's where we found that little underwater cave, if you can call it that. It wasn't much of a cave, but it's some place I want to explore again because it leads right into the island. And I want to see it because I feel like it probably has created some tide pools over there. And I'd like, I would really like to explore the other side of what we couldn't see because I had all my gear on and I didn't actually get off to go on the island. So maybe the next time I'm in St. Thomas, we can do that. That would be pretty, pretty fun. Um, so I have video of that that I'm going to be doing. That, that dive, I went out with G.I. Joe, Clemric, and Rommel. Um, Clemric caught a really big Kubera snapper as well as a dog, dog, dog snapper, dog snapper as well as a Kubera snapper. Um, I got a jack and a lionfish and a lobster, and, and a lobster, I think, on that dive. It was a pretty good dive. I, I really like that spot. Um, it's just that I didn't see much fish to shoot. You know, at this point, I don't shoot anything that I'm not going to, well, I never shot anything that I don't eat, but they have to be pretty sizable for me to shoot them now. Um, not just you know, not just legal enough. Um, so when I took the, the jack down, my, my brother shot the barracuda because the barracuda kind of was circling us. So that's going to be fun editing that video. That'll be up for you guys soon. Um, where else did we go? I have video of Congo Key. That is a really nice dive. I mean, the the way the rock is just, it's just like a wall. It's like a big wall. I don't even know how to explain that. It's almost like being in the mountains underwater. If you, if you could understand that because the, the wall is so massive, right? Cause it's like, you have this little key and all that rock that shot up in order to make the key is what you're seeing under the water. Um, I shot a big amberjack there, but the amberjack got away because my flapper didn't hold. It didn't go up to, to hold the amberjack. So when I was pulling the amberjack in, it, it swam away. You know, it happens sometimes, unfortunately. What you gonna do, right? Um, but my brother caught a, what did he catch? He caught a nice size African pompano. African pompano is really good eating. I love that fish. That's a nice fish. I mean, once it, it, they they look really small because they're a flat fish, but their meat is is really it's really meaty. Um, so you fillet that, and it almost plumps up. It really plumps up, and it's really juicy. Um, and it's a firm fish, firm white meat again. I really like African pompano. I wish I saw them more often. The only other time I saw an African pompano was in the Keys, and that's another situation where I shot after the fish and it got off because the um, because the flopper the flopper didn't engage. It went, you know, the flopper is a thing on the on the shaft of the spare spare gun that goes up so that when the fish bump into it, they can't come off. Sometimes it malfunctions when we shoot, so unfortunately, sometimes that that makes us lose our fish. And you know that that particular time, because I have video of that on the on the channel um, when we went to the Keys, the one that got away, that was really hurtful for me, because it was the first time I had shot an African pompano, and it's like it was a perfect shot. It was straight in the middle of the body, kind of like the amberjack. The amberjack was the same situation. I had shot straight in the middle of the body. I was sure that that fish was mine, and the next thing you know, I see it swimming all along. Ah, it's a rough fall here sometimes. And let's see what else I have written down here. Do we have? Do I have any divers on the live tonight? And if there are any divers, where are you guys diving? Do, do, do.
So what I was talking about with the lionfish, you know, it's really important to be safe. Um, Cause the thing is you don't know what kind of reaction you would have. So the lionfish is venomous, not poisonous as I'm sure if you've been watching my channel, you probably know this by now. Um, but the reaction you have is just like anything. People have allergies and you know, one person might suffer really bad versus someone else. It won't be as bad as a, of a situation for them. Um, so, you know, the best thing to do is to avoid it, period. Because I don't think you want to figure out what your, your reaction is going to be to it, right? So some of those things that you would do, I would recommend definitely learning about the lionfish. You need to learn about it, know it in and out before you start sparing them. Um, that's kind of how, how I got started with spare fishing. Um, once I got my diving certification, I, I, was, I, had, I had gotten a camera right away. Filming stuff already, right? But a lot of times I would be diving and I didn't know what kind of fish it was I was looking at. I really hated that. If you know me, I'm a Virgo. I need to know everything, right? So I started doing webinars where it would teach you how, how to identify fish. That's that, the first thing I did. There's an organization called Reef, R-E-E-F, um, and they do this thing called Fishing Art. It's a webinar where they teach you about fish fish so i i would take the class i would sign up for the classes and join join the zoom call and they would pretty they would probably go over a specific species every night right so that one night that they would go over um like tropical fish fish you would see in the caribbean then you have um maybe fish that you would see in mexico or they would concentrate on the different type of snapper or they would concentrate on the different types of groupers and so on and so forth. So I did enough of those and that's how I learned to identify fish. And that's what I did before I started uh, spare fishing. Um, because in, in South Florida, along with a lot of other places, uh, a lot of places have regulations on fish. So as to keep the population in check, so everything is not overfished and, um, some, although they have regulations, sometimes they're not, um, people don't abide by them or the law is not enforced. Um, but to be a good citizen, obviously. So in South Florida, you have to get a fishing license. Um, once you get a fishing license on the website shows you all the fish that you're allowed to catch, what sizes you're allowed to catch. So let's say a uh, yellowtail snapper, right? Yellowtail snapper is opened all year long. So there's no season. So you're not cut off at a certain time because there's a lot of different fish that only from this month to this month is when you can catch this fish. If you catch it outside of that month, you can get in trouble, you know? So that's how they regulate it because a lot, and a lot of those are determined by when the fishes spawn and as well as just their population because people go out here and do surveys and see what fish like we're not seeing enough of these anymore you know so maybe we need to dial it back on on the amount of fish that we're allowing people to catch for example hogfish hogfish is a really good fish that's that's like top tier right there for me personally like lionfish and hogfish are my top two fish right Lionfish is another white firm meat. It actually is really iridescent meat, right? Um, and the thing about hogfish is they're not the smartest fish. They're like, they literally just turn to the side and watch you and like, bloop, bloop, you know? So they're easy to, to catch. So a couple of years back, they only had to be 12 inches long. 12 inches long. And they were available to you all year. All year long, you could shoot lionfish. I mean, sorry, hogfish. Was there a limit on them? I'm trying to remember if there was a limit. Was it? 
I don't remember there being a limit on the amount you could catch. If it was, it was probably five. But anyway, um, they changed the regulation a couple of years ago. And now, when did it end? I believe it ended October 31st. And it doesn't open again until like probably sometime in May. Um, so we're we're restricted to those months. Not only are we restricted to those months, we're also restricted to them. They have to be now 16 inches. They have to be 16 inches instead of 12 inches now. So sorry about that, guys. Was getting a call. So um Am I back? Okay. So now they have to be 16 inches and they, you only get them for a few months. So that's how they keep keep an eye on or keep the, you know, keep the population going. Because if we overfish them and we run them into extinction, then what good is that to us, you know? Um, and that's on the, uh, in South Florida. On the Gulf side of Florida, they're still allowed to get five per day per person. And they only have to be 14 inches long. So 14 inches long, five per day per person, available all year round. So it does depend on what the population is looking like in the particular area. Um, so like I was saying, you get the license, you have that information available to you of what the regulations are for all the different species. And you need to study that, right? Because that's how you're going to determine what you can shoot on any given day. Um, you do that. And I think it's one of the best ways to supply yourself with food, right? I'm not going to the supermarket and picking up fish. I have my own, it's in the freezer. I know how long it's been out. I know how it was prepared. It's not going through any weird processes. I'm the one, I, I, I take it out the ocean, I clean it, I season it, you know, um, and then I cook it. So do you need to be certified to dive with? So the thing is, is that you have to be certified to dive with a scuba tank, right? Dive shops are not going to rent you gear without you showing them a certification card. So in that sense, yes. Now, if you are free diving, I don't have a problem free diving with someone. But to say we're going to go scuba diving, you would have to be certified, yeah. Dive charters all require certification. Because you're not, they're not gonna allow you on the boat to dive. Like I said, dive shops are not gonna rent you gear without certification. So if you're talking about scuba diving, yes, you'll definitely need to be certified. But if we're talking about free diving, that's a free for all, right? Because um, as long as you can hold your breath <laughs> for a decent amount of time and be a good dive buddy, that's all we need. So I'm willing, I'm willing to dive with anyone who's a free diver. I'm not the best free diver, um, but I can hold my own. I, I can hold my own enough. And I actually want to take a class on that to, to be able to have a longer breath hold. So hopefully, hopefully this year I can do that. But yeah, if you if you are in the South Florida area, hit me up if you're looking for something. I'll go snorkeling or free diving with anyone that's interested. If you want to go spear fishing, if you want to go lobstering, lobster season ends here on the 31st of March, and it doesn't open up again until August officially. There's a mini season where they allow people two days to catch lobster before the commercial season opens back up again. Um, but like I said, so August all the way to August all the way to March, the end of March is when we have lobster season here in South Florida. 
In St. Thomas, there's no lobster season, but there are restrictions. The carapace has to be three and a half inches, whereas in Florida, it only has to be uh, three inches. So they have to be a little bigger, but St. Thomas lobster are a lot bigger than the ones here anyway. We got some massive, we get some massive lobsters. If you look at, cause I, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook and you go through the pictures, you'll see we catch some monsters sometimes. So good stuff. But yeah, any other questions? Cause if not, I'm going to start wrapping this up. See if there's anything else I wanted to say. But other than that, you guys just just keep looking out on the page. Make sure you like this video. Um, let me know in the comments if there's anything that you're looking forward to seeing from me or interested in seeing from me, and I'll work on doing that on my upcoming videos. Like I said, I have a, I have a video coming up for Cookie Point, Congo Key. That's in the Lavango Key area. That's close to like St. John. Um, where else have we gone? We did one in Brewers Bay um, area. That's one of my favorite spots. I got a couple lionfish from that area. They were kind of small though, because anytime I go home, I, I usually go to Brewers Bay and we always catch lionfish. So they're getting smaller and smaller now that, you know, whenever I go there, because I guess, us repeatedly taking care of that area, um, the, the population is going down. You know, I don't think we're ever going to get rid of lionfish, but for me, helping out, helping out, taking out the big ones so that they don't eat the native fish and it's a source of food for me, it's a win-win situation, right? So, that's one of the, that's the main reason that I go after lionfish more than anything else. I'm not saying I won't shoot other fish because I definitely will. If a big uh, yellowtail snapper comes near me or, you know, amberjack, cobia, any of the above, I'll, I'll take them out. But, you know, I always have my lionfish spear. Um, I always have shears just in case I don't have like a zookeeper or a lionfish bag with me. So, you know, um, but yeah, keep an eye out. I also have a line, t-shirts and stuff. You can find that on, um, on Spreadshirt. I'll leave that link in the description and comments below as well. Uh, what else we have going on? Yeah, so there's a couple, couple good things coming up. Like I said, the submarine submersible course is in March. Looking forward to doing that. Um, I'm really interested in seeing lionfish at that depth because my certification allows me to go up to 130 feet deep. Um, so I'm not I'm a tech diver. I'm a regular advanced open water diver. I have my dive master certification, um, so I'm allowed to go 130 feet. I don't really like going that deep because I start getting a headache and all that stuff. Once at once I, I can't stay down there very long before my body starts getting um, affected. Um, so the sweet spot for me is like 50, 60 feet. I really like that, that depth, but like I said, I'm not afraid to go down deeper, but, um, I really can't stay down there too long. It does, it doesn't sit well with my body. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing the submersible class and getting in that submarine. Where do you find red snappers? By red snappers, do you mean mutton snapper? Because I've never seen a red snapper in Flor in St. Thomas. Now, mutton snappers, I see all the time. I see them all the everywhere we dive, to be honest with you. But they are really fast. They're really fast. Um, not as fast as yellowtail snappers. Yellowtail snappers are a little harder to catch up with. They're very skittish, and they don't they don't let you get too close to them. Um, but mutton snapper have quite a fight on them. So unless you take them out with a kill shot, be prepared for a whole lot of wriggling, wriggling on your um, shaft. You know, you have to bring it in really quick before you lose that fish because they will rip themselves off of a spare. Like legit. It's happened a couple of times to me. 
but mutton snapper you can find mutton snapper everywhere on st thomas we always see mutton sometimes they're not large enough for me to shoot but we always see mutton snapper no matter where we dive um i see some big ones in cookie point so that's a good place to go if you're looking for that cookie point is good for shoot the cookie point is good for a lot of fish to be honest with you yellowtail they have massive yellowtail over there massive jacks if you're looking for mutton snapper, that's that's one of the places to go for sure. You can't really go wrong diving on Cookie Point, especially if you're going spare fishing. Spare fishing or just diving, period, that's a good spot. You know, you are definitely, if you don't come back with a fish, something's wrong. <laughs> you're going to have to hook up with me and, uh, and get some pointers or something. <laughs> but if you don't come back with a fish on Cookie Point, something definitely wrong. There's grouper, there's grouper there too. Grouper, jacks, a lot of red hind grouper. You know where a lot of red hind grouper are? Um, down by Limburg. Limburg Bay and Brewers Bay have a lot of red hind grouper. But yeah, mutton snapper, cookie point is the place to be. Um, where else do we go over there? Um, Vesup, Vesup is a good area too. Although we weren't we weren't very successful our last two dives over there. Vesup kinda looked like it drying up a little bit. I don't know, maybe all the boat activity. I'm not sure why. Well, all right, guys. It was nice chatting it up with y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. If you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button hit the notification bell to know when the next video is coming out. I'm going to be working on the lionfish video and one of those um, adventure videos that I told you all about, whether it be um, Saba, Congo Key. I'm going to do them all. It just takes time for me to edit, unfortunately. You know, um, it takes time. I, I, I'm, I'm a bit of a perfectionist in my production, so it takes me a little longer probably than most because uh, I don't want to just throw something out there. I'm also going to do the video of me in Lady on the Lady Luck when my camera, my underwater housing broke. Um, GoPro is actually supposed to be sending me a replacement underwater housing. Um, I'm still waiting for that. So hopefully, I, I guess it's a good thing that I'm not diving tomorrow because I wouldn't have any way to film underwater because the GoPros uh, without an underwater housing can only go down to about 30 feet. It's 33, but it starts acting weird. I think once you pass like 25 feet, you don't, you can't really operate the camera the way it's supposed to. The pressure gets to it. Um, so I guess it's a good thing that I'm not diving tomorrow because I don't have an underwater housing yet. It's getting shipped from GoPro. Um, hopefully I get that maybe by Monday. And I don't know if I'll be going out again out this weekend. Hopefully I get the chance to do that. And I'll bring you guys along with me. Thank you for stopping by. I appreciate you guys. And I'll see you in the next video.